people often are not ready to sell, even though they know they're gonna have to, and they know it's, it's pending, and there's the impending doom, and they're gonna have to sell, but they're not ready to sell today. So instead of saying, hey, I wanna buy your house, and give you money to move, and you can say, hey, these are some options to buy time to stay in your house a little bit longer, it opens the door for people wanting to talk to us. Hey! Real estate 
120 lessons. It's uh, hundreds of pages. So I send you a lesson uh, like every third day or something like that to you get all 20 lessons. And it's a really good program. And if you listen to it and do what I tell you to do, there's enough information for you to close the deal. So over here at Dwander for a while, we're all about helping you guys close deals, making money, wholesaling, subject twos, short sales, uh, commercial, rentals, just really anything, land, um, trailer parks, just whatever you want to buy, we do it all. I've been investing for over 30 years, my daughter's 34, so baby, basically since she was like a, a baby, she was a little baby girl. I went door knocking with a little baby girl hanging on my hip. And so now I door knock with her and Felicia, who's my daughter-in-law's sister. And I started doing it this year because, you know, Bill went through that stem cell transplant. And we were living down in Denver in special housing, and we were just in all, all the time. And when the summer came, August of 2022, um, we had a little bit more freedom, like, like a little bit more freedom as far as we could have some people come visit us at the hotel in the lobby, where the apartment in the lobby there. And we had just a little bit more freedom, but not enough where Bill could go out and be around people. And I told the girls, like, hey, let me go, let me go door knocking with you guys and let's do some deals for this next year. We're going to do for a year and we'll do some deals and this will give me something to do besides just constant caretaking. But I was very cautious. I didn't go to a lot of doors because, um, you know, I couldn't risk taking any germs back to Bill. Uh, but we, I've had a blast. Now, I did something today. So I did a thing. I did a thing. So we have this homeowner. <laughs> ah! I'm going to share with you. It says fresh off the press right here. Hot off the press, folks. Hot off the press. This is the first time in my entire life I've ever done this. So I'm going to see, see how ingenious it was. There's this couple, Alicia and Mike. I think I mentioned them to you before. Uh, we talked to them in December for the first time. Like, I think December 8th or 9th or something like that. And we knocked on their door. And they said, hey, we just wired the bank $29,000. Like literally the day before. So I know I told you this part. I think I did. I'm not sure. It could have been on TikTok, but I'm going to cover it now. So they, and I said, where did you get that figure, $29,000? My ears are already popping, going up the mountain. And they said, well, they had, you know, your, not your bank statement, your loan payment statement. And it said they owed, it tells you, you know, what you owe. And it said they owed $29,000. So they wired that amount of money to the bank on that day because their sale date was like four or five days later. And I said, is that the reinstatement amount? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, if there's a reinstatement, a reinstatement is the back payments, the attorney's fees, the forced insurance, all the things that the bank adds on. And she goes, no, I don't know what you're talking about. This is just what was on the the loan payment statement. So we wired this amount of money to the bank. So I felt really bad, completely busting their, bursting their bubble. Cause she goes, we sold everything we could. We cashed out our reti retirement. I can say I kept sold on them. I just had Wendy's. And she says, we sold one of our vehicles and we got rid of everything that we own. And we wired the $29,000 in. Well, they're homeowners, so there would be no reason for them to know that you have to get a reinstatement figure from the bank. So whatever is on the bank statement, once you've gone into foreclosure and have a sale date set, that's not what it costs to bring the loan current. There's the, the reinstatement is everything included. Like I said, attorney's fees, forced insurance, real estate taxes, just whatever. So they wired the 29,000. They thought they were good to go. They were all excited. And it was, you know, a week, two weeks before Christmas. We get it out before Christmas. I think it was like the 8th or 9th of December. Sorry, I'm, I'm in the snake. I told you all about this on the way down today. There's this curvy part. Seems curvier on the way up, to be honest with you. Um, I 
guess it's because the mountain. See, like the mountain is like right there. See it? So on the way up, you're literally right next to the mountain. On the way down, you're by the ravines. It doesn't seem as tight on the other side. So I couldn't not tell them because, you know, it was two weeks before Christmas and so, so now you gotta call the bank, gotta get a reinstatement figure. I told them exactly what to ask the bank for. And as it turns out, the reinstatement amount was, uh, I think, over, over $45,000. So now these young couple wired $29,000. So what about the $29,000? I said, oh no, the bank will keep it for, you know, so they, they called, first of all, they called the bank, they asked for a reinstatement. Sorry, my ears are popping. When you drive up the mountain, right around when you're in the snake, your ears pop. On the way up and on the way down. And the banks won't give you a reinstatement over the phone. They will email you one and they'll also mail you a hard copy. It takes seven to ten days to get a reinstatement. I don't know why. The banks would just give it to you over the phone, but they won't. So anyway, they get their reinstatement figure right before Christmas and is $45,000. And she goes, what does this mean? So well, this means that you owe the bank $45,000 to bring the loan current. She's like, what about the $29,000 that we sent in? And so the $29,000 that you sent in, the bank will obviously keep it, but now it goes, goes towards just paying on your loan. It's not enough to bring you out of foreclosure. So she's crying, he's crying, everybody's crying, everybody's upset. And I said, hey, listen, you know, you guys get through Christmas and New Year's, come back the first week of January and we'll help you get this figured out. We'll help you figure out a way to get the money or sell. And they're like, no, we're just going to have to move. I said, well, why the house from you? But I said, whatever we do, I'll make sure that you get that entire $29,000 back. So whatever amount you get for selling your house to us, I'll make sure you get between thirty dollars and $50,000 in your pocket. I'm like, okay, okay, we're going to do that. So that's where we left it. Then we started calling them back and they were like, hey, and then all of a sudden for the last two weeks, I can't get them on the phone. So today we went to their house. <laughs> Cause I just been, they're like so heavy on my heart. So they have a mail slot <clears throat> in their house that goes directly into the house. So I knocked on the door and I can hear I, Alicia's car is in the driveway. I can hear that they're in the house. They don't want to answer the door. So I wrote a note and I stick it to the mail slot and I left it hanging half in and half out. And Felicia had turned around and walked back to the car and when we got back to the car, I looked back at the house. She'd pulled the note inside. So she read my note. So I said, okay, let's go, let's go leave her another note. So I left another and said, hey, listen, I know this is embarrassing. And I wrote like, you know, the truth. Like this is embarrassing. I know I lost the house in foreclosure. When I lost my house in foreclosure, I had a baby, I was a single mom. I get it, it's embarrassing, it's scary. I understand, like I, I understand so much what you're going through. It's like, come on, we've already talked to you, we've already told you we can, you know, get you that $29,000 back. Sorry. Gotta get my ears to pop. And <clears throat> I said, you know, we've already talked, we've already been here one time, like don't be shy, just, you know, we're outside. Open the door. Come outside. So we sat there for a minute. She didn't come outside. So I'm like, all right, well, we got a couple other people to follow up with that we're working with, like, hot and heavy. And I called Bill. And I said, I cannot get this woman to answer the door. We left her a note. She pulled it into the mail slot and left her another note. And she didn't pull that one in because she knew we were sitting outside. So what we did it was we drove around the block and went back and it was pulled inside, too. <laughs> so... And she read both of my notes. He goes, well, why don't you take like $20 and say, I'd like to buy, you know, 10 minutes of your time. Here's $20. Will you just please open the door and talk to us. So we're like, oh, you know, that's actually a good idea. Thanks, Bill. You know, my man's always full of good ideas. So we thought, okay, that'd be fun. So then Felicia and I were talking. And like I said, we've been to their house one time in December. I said, you know what we should do? Because the house reeked a pot. I said, we should go buy him a joint. <laughs> ah, I do not smoke weed. I, I tried it when it first became legal. It is nothing like 
what they had in the 70s in high school. It's just so strong now. It's like, I just, I can't do it. I don't like THC. I don't like the high. It makes me weird. It makes me paranoid. Like, really weirdly paranoid. I stay high for like what feels like 20 days. I hate it. I just hate the whole thing. So, I am not a connoisseur. I do use um, CBD lotion, like a 20 to 1 on my uh, hips and my knees and my feet and stuff like that. But I know nothing about the pot industry. But I know they smell pot. And I said, well, you know what? They probably like a joint. So let's go get them a joint. <laughs> so, we Googled the nearest dispensary. It's called Live Well. So we went into this dispensary. Felicia and I bought them a joint, $7.50. I paid 10 cents to get a bag, so I got a big green pot bag, and went back over to Alicia's house, and I wrote a note, said, hey, I know this is a stressful time, <laughs> maybe this will help, give us a call, I'm like, girl, we've already talked, we've already met, we've already agreed to try to help you guys out, like, don't go getting shy on me now, and went back to her house, and her dog was outside in the yard, just like free in the yard. So, pet the dog, walk up to the door, and suck the joint through the mail hole. <laughs> ah, so I'm so excited to see if she calls or not. But Bill's idea of giving them 20 bucks and saying, hey, I want to buy, you know, 10 minutes of your time. I thought, well, shit, they're all stressed out. We just give them some weed. They smell, the house smells the time we went. It reeked. And uh, so anyway, so the first time ever in my whole entire life, 64 years old, 33 years as a real estate investor, I took a homeowner a joint and a note and put it through the slot and played with the dog for like five minutes outside. So I have to let you know how that goes. That's pretty funny. I was laughing pretty hard about that. But oh my goodness. So... I don't know, you know, I don't know. I don't understand what's happening. I mean, I get them embarrassed, and there's all kinds of stuff outside. They've got um, mattresses and baby cribs and a couch, and they've got all kinds of stuff outside. I don't think, I'm hoping that we didn't miss the sale date. I didn't, if we, if we did, um, I'll be super bummed, but I thought we were really keeping track of it sale date is later in the month of February. It is possible that we didn't realize it maybe got pushed back to January and we might have missed it, which would be a shame if they just missed it and let it go because they've got so much equity, like so, so, so much equity. So I don't know. We'll find out. So that is the big scoop of the day. So I <laughs> told Felicia, I said, well, if they call back, Whenever we get homeowners and, you know, they're trying to decide if they should work with us, if they smoke weed, we'll just, we'll, we'll pass out our card and our fed up package with the 10 options to buy time to stay in your home and we'll give them joints. <laughs> ah, and you know, I gotta tell you, just because I'm 64, I know pot's been legal for, I don't know, maybe a decade now or something, but it still feels really weird to me because... In the 70s and the 80s, and I did smoke a little bit here and there, everything was so sneaky and you had to be worried about getting caught. And, you know, everything was a big deal. And it's just so weird to walk into a store. It looks like a, a drugstore. It's just the shelves full of creams and lotions and gummies and joints and chocolate. And it's so weird. It's, so they wouldn't let me take a picture. I was like, I'll take a picture. I'm like, no, you can go on our website and take some pictures off there. But I wanted to take a picture, like, holding the joint in the store, but they wouldn't let me, so that's all right. But it is still just a weird thing for me because, um, I don't know, I still feel like people should, you know, sneak it around. Probably how it was when alcohol became legal. People were like, oh my God, we can drink, like, out in the open? So that's how I still feel about pot. I smell it, I'm like, oh my God, people are outside, like, in the park, just smoking pot out in the open. Boy, my ears are popping a lot. So... While we were at the dispensary, they have some yellow parking poles that had a lot of stickers on them. So we put one of our I Buy House's cash bumper stickers on the poles. And we put one on the drive-thru at the Taco Bell. And I'll tell you one thing, we've been putting those bumper
bumper stickers. If you go, I've shown them to you before, but if you look at some of my TikTok videos, I've got pictures of the bumper stickers. I don't have one right here. Up close, there are bright orange bumper stickers that say, We My House is Cash, with a phone number. We've been putting those things everywhere. The Starbucks drive through I am getting so many phone calls. Like, it's so shocking how many phone calls. That's kind of a fun thing to do because nobody that I know of is doing that anywhere except using them for bumper stickers. And we're, if there's any place that sticks, that's where we're putting it. And I did a TikTok video. If you look, go over to Dwantastic on my TikTok. Um, I did a video, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And I showed all these places that we put them. And we have them in the Whole Foods. They have a bulletin board at the back. Um, the natural grocers, they're at the billboard in the back. Up here in the mountains, your mailboxes are like 20 mailboxes in a row. And there's a little bulletin board. We put them there. Three or four different places up in the mountains. We put them at drive throughs And we just get calls all the time. Hey, I was sitting up in Starbucks, sitting in Wendy's. I saw your bumper sticker and people call and just ask those questions. So, uh, it's turning up. We haven't closed a deal from it yet. I'll certainly let you know when I close a deal from that exact thing. But we've gotten a bunch of phone calls. And mostly people, you know, sometimes you just can't help them. They owe too much and whatever. But, um, so we'll see. So I feel like the, the point of today's podcast always is to just educate and share stories and tell you about conversations that I'm having with homeowners to try to help you have better conversations and, you know, I, like I said, when we talk to someone at the door, I say like, hey, my name is, I have a clipboard in my hand that has the printout of all the foreclosures. I say, hey, my name is Dwan. We're at the uh, courthouse doing some research. We see that you have a pending problem with your property. I don't say you're in foreclosure. And then right then I say, we specialize in helping folks like you buy time to stay in their home. And we want to know what we can do to help. And right then I hand them the fed up package. So we call it fed up with foreclosures. Okay, I'm in like the curvy part of, I'm in the top of the mountains now. Um, where it all merged down into one lane. So I hand them this thing, it's called the fed up with foreclosures. And you can um, contact me anywhere on social media or on my website and you can get a copy of that package. And it, basically has uh, 10 options for homeowners to buy time to stay in their home. So we hand them the fed up package and say, hey, um, this is a, a package we give out for free. It says, are you fed up with your situation? These are your 10 options to buy time to stay in your home. And it lists the 10 options that they have. And everyone's all, and it's 30 pages. And they're like, wow, thank you. So people are so excited to get that fed up package. And then it shows, it, first of all, it breaks the eyes. The main thing is it breaks the eyes. It also puts something in your customer's hands so they're not staring at you. They have something in their hands, and which is helpful. Because, you know, you're usually nervous, and, you know, they're nervous too. So it helps you all to break the ice. But it does give them 10 options of buy time to stay in their home. And the reason we do that is because people often are not ready to sell, even though they know they're going to have to, and they know it's... It's pending and there's the impending doom and they're gonna have to sell but they're not ready to sell today so instead of saying hey I want to buy your house and give you money to move and you can say hey these are some options to buy time to stay in your house a little bit longer it opens the door for people wanting to talk to us my ears are popping everywhere today there we go there we go. And everybody wants to buy time if they can. So when they get the option to, to buy time, they'll take the package. And then they've got the package. And that way you can start your conversation. Like, hey, option one, a loan modification. Are you doing a loan modification? Almost everybody tries that first. Are you doing a forbearance agreement? The government put us on a nationwide forbearance agreement back in COVID. A lot of people are still not making payments since COVID. It's 2023, so a lot of people are super far behind. But these are the options that are listed, and then people like that. And then it gets the conversation, and it makes us easier for us to talk to people. And the main thing is, we always say to people, like, what's your goal? And most people say, well, I'd like to stay in my home. I say, okay, so let's figure out how to make that happen. Have you applied for a loan modification? They're like, no, yes, maybe. 
I'm trying. Say, so, well, the thing that the banks are going to want to know is do you make the income? Because it's like applying for a loan, but not as strict as applying for a new loan. It's a loan modification. So you do have to be able to prove that you can make the payments. And they may want you to put up a little bit of money to catch up some payments. Usually not, but sometimes. And then they put you on what's called a three-month trial. So you make the first payment, you make the second payment, you make the third payment. After you've made three payments, the loan modification becomes permanent and they're no longer in foreclosure. But they don't, if they miss one of those three payments, then the bank will still go ahead and sell their home. So I always start talking to them about, okay, so if you haven't done a modification yet, let me tell you what that's, what that's about. And I explain it, but it's right in the packet. So they have it in their hands. And I open the packet and show it the section there. And then they deem us as being concerned and looking out for their best interests, which we are, and trying to help them buy time. And usually within a week or two or three of initial conversation with the homeowner, or they actually start having to fill out the actual loan modification paperwork, they recognize that they cannot make the payments. They recognize that they don't have the income that they had before or whatever, and that they are gonna actually have to move. So sometimes just handing them, sorry, I had to change hands again. Just handing them the fed up package is enough for them to recognize that they're moving really is their only option. But again, after having done this for so many decades, when you just say to homeowners, like, hey, I'll give you cash for your house, how quick can you move out? It's really offensive to a lot of people and they're not ready to move and they don't want to move. They don't want to move, most of them, period. But they're not ready. So if you give them options to buy time, they're more interested in having a conversation with you. And that's honestly how we get most of the deals that other investors don't get is because we didn't approach them in the beginning of wanting to snap up their house. We approach them with helping them buy time. And we do try, you know, if we can help them buy two or three or four months or whatever, we'll do whatever we can. Because, you know, the ultimate thing is, like I always say, is people before profits. So if we can help them, we do. And if we can't, then we buy the house. But the couple today, like literally are inside the house and not answering the door. And I'm like, why would they do that? And I think, well, maybe they decided to work with another investor. Maybe that we missed the sale date. We tried to find it on the public records day. I couldn't find it. So maybe we missed something. Maybe they slipped through the crack. I don't know. I mean, our follow-up game is strong. So I have to let you guys know what happens. So that is what a life is like in the day of a real estate investor today. We had a super good day. The weather was beautiful. And covered a lot of ground. We talked to a lot of people today. We've got three or four like really super solid heavy leads. People that have signed authorization to release information and documents so that we can contact the bank and find out what their reinstatement is. So for all of you, when you're meeting a homeowner that's behind foreclosure and they show you their loan paperwork and it says they owe this much money, that's not it. So you have to call the bank and this is the two things I asked the bank for. Well, I asked for three things. I asked for a reinstatement, first of all, reinstatement, and the bank will email it and send it to the actual property address. Then I asked for a complete payoff so that if, when I buy it, I know exactly what the payoff is to the penny. And then I asked for the foreclosure sale date or if they agreed to postpone it for something in writing that they've agreed to postpone the sale date. Now, sometimes they won't send me the sale date or a postponement because I'll just say, look it up in the public records. But they will always send a reinstatement. They'll always send a payoff. And those are two different things. If you just say, I want a reinstatement, the bank will just send a reinstatement. If you say, I want a payoff, they'll just send you the full payoff. So you need both of those figures. Because if you're going to try to help the people or you want to take it over, like my son just got a subject to last week, he's going to make up the back payments and he's taking over the payments. Well, I need a reinstatement because again, what's on the loan paperwork that you get in the mail every month, that's not a reinstatement. That just shows how much you're behind, but the reinstatement has a lot of stuff added into it, like taxes, insurance, attorney's fees, whatever they've done, a 
appraisals. Um, they've done probably a BPO, a bunch of stuff like that. So I get a reinstatement and I get a payoff. And with the reinstatement and the payoff, I have the two figures that I need. So if we're gonna try and reinstate or if they're gonna sell it to me, I need the payoff. And the payoff will be good through this day. So if you're calling February 1st and you say, give me a reinstatement that's good through February 28th. And then they'll give you a reinstatement that's good through that day. So, you know, not a reinstatement. Well, a reinstatement and a payoff, both. Good through this day, whatever day it is. Good through March 15th, good through, you know, whatever. And then you have your numbers. And then you can decide what to work, what to offer, how much to offer the homeowners, what you can sell it for. Do you want to rehab it? Do you want to flip it? Do you want to keep it for rental? Do you want to Airbnb it? Like, what do you want to do with it? That's kind of how you do it. So once I've got a reinstatement and a payoff, then I've got real numbers. I can run real comps. I can make a decision and know what the actual value is and what I need to make and what they need to make and what everybody needs to make. And that's how we structure the deals. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. I like doing these uh, driving. I am gonna have to get a little sticky thing to stick my phone up on my windshield because it's kind of hard to hold it in the pop socket and drive. And Lord knows I don't want to get into any kind of an accident or anything like that. So if you learned anything or you had fun today, I want you to leave me a five star review. Nothing less than five stars. I'm turning on my road to go to my road. So now I'm trying off the mountains, this is off the mountain road, to go into the subdivision. And once you turn off this road, our house is 20 more minutes inside the subdivision. So we live at like the top of the actual world. Oh, Lord. So, and the temperatures dropped down to 30. So it was 50 something there in Denver, coming up to the mountains, plus another extra 30 minutes. Temperatures drop down to 30, so it's uh, usually about 10 to 15 degrees. Sometimes 20 degrees colder in the mountains, but it's also uh, getting dusk-ish, so it's a little bit later in the day as well. All right, so leave me a five-star review. Subscribe. Share the podcast with your friends. Don't forget to opt in at dwanderful.com. You can also watch these on YouTube. And you want to watch these. I'm way more fun to watch than I am to listen to. Because you need to see all my wonderfulness. So you need to watch these. You can watch them on my website, wonderful.com. Watch them on my YouTube channel, it's Wonderful Real Estate Investing. And um, I'm everywhere. So follow, like, love, share it, talk about it. Let me know if you like these while I'm driving or not. If it's too distracting for you guys, you let me know and I'll do whatever you say. So we'll be back next week, same bad time, same bad channel, and remember...